good morning everyone myself dr sadhna singh i am a faculty assistant professor in uh, department of biochemistry school of sciences so i am going to take my lecture on pg bch 111 basic biotechnology uh, and the topic polymerase chain reaction which is an also called an artificial dna synthesis so uh, as i mentioned previously that it is a artificial gene or dna synthesis means the process is going to take place outside the human body so it is also called an in vitro in vitro artificial uh, synthesis because in our body simultaneously dna processing is going on dna replication actually is going on so what is pcr it is the molecular biology technique most powerful technique that produces large quantity of dna from small quantity of dna so it was invented by carimulus so it was invented by carimulus in 1983 and it he was awarded the nobel prize nobel prize in 1993 so what does pcr do it amplifies a single copy of dna from uh, in a, from a single copy of dna into million or billion copies with the help of pcr that is a thermocycler so hence it is also called an artificial replication process because with the help of the thermocycler millions and billions of copies will be produced so what is so what are the components of the pcr components of the pcr is template dna which means a wanted dna which has to be templified uh, which has to be amplified dna polymerase a suitable buffer which contains mg+2 which acts as a catalyst for the dna polymerase again forward in the reverse primers dntps which acts as a substrate pcr grade water and thermocycler again a machine gel electrophoresis where the gel has to be pcr product has to be run and the gel documentation unit where we view that Uh, amplified product so this is the wanted gene and this is our template dna during the first cycle 2 to the power 4 copies will be produced because after this separation one will become this template strand and second will become this template strand so 2 to the power 4 uh, power 4 copies will be produced and in the next cycle eight copies will be produced hence after 35th cycle 68 that is billions of copies will be produced so leading to the components dna polymerase it adds sequentially uh, nucleotides complementary to the template strand at the 3 prime oh of the bound primers and synthesizes new strand of the dna complementary to the target strand this is a template strand it has 5 prime and it has 3 prime so here 3 prime oh of the primer and nucleotides will be added for the synthesis so for this we use for this we use two types of uh, dna polymerases that is tag dna polymerases which is known for its high temperature stability because during the initial steps dna denaturation will occurs which occurs at the 94 degree centigrade so for this thing we will uh, in general lab practices we will use uh, tag dna polymerase that is thermo thermus acutus uh, a bacteria it is a thermophilic bacteria from this tag dna polymerase uh, has been obtained next uh, dna polymerase is pfu dna polymerase which is obtained from the bacterium pyrococcus ferociosus this is known for the higher accuracy means if you are cloning uh, the dna then more um, uh, most accuracy uh, has to be needed so for higher fidelity we will be using pfu dna polymerases as i mentioned magnesium ion is used as a buffer uh, as a cofactor which is uh, uh, applied in the buffer so for pr uh, primers for amplification so this is the forward primer and this is the reverse primer these two primers has to be made for the dna amplification so uh, forward primer has to be made in the anti sense strand and in the uh, and in the sense strand reverse primer has to be and in the and in and from the uh, anti sense strand reverse primer has to be made which is from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction and forward prim forward primer is 5 prime to 3 prime direction. if we consider the sense strand for the uh, for designing of the primer so forward primer would be the beginning of the gene so considering uh, the difference between the forward and the reverse primer uh, for uh, template strand uh, sense strand and anti sense strand also known as the plus and the minus strand so here you can see if reverse primer will be made from the plus strand and the uh, from the minus and the, uh, forward primer will be made so there are these are some characteristics that in the forward primers the pcr primers which are complementary to complementary to the anti sense strand of the double stranded dna and uh, reverse primer it is complementary to the uh, sense strand of the double stranded dna which i already mentioned 
and it is responsible for the amplification of the antisense strand and in the reverse uh, primers it is responsible for the amplification of the this is uh, uh, sense strand again it occurs at the 5 prime end of the pcr product forward primers forward primers will occur at the 5 prime end of the pcr product and in the reverse primer it will occur at the 3 prime end of the pcr product so these are called forward primers are called 5 prime primers and this is called 3 prime primers so this is the basic representation of the polymerase chain reaction so uh, this is the dna primer this is the original dna which is also called the template so these are the dntps so all the components would be added in one reaction and again in the first step denaturation will take place means both the strand will be separated in the second strand primer annealing will take place and simultaneously at the extension dna synthesis would begin in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction these are the steps involved in the polymerase chain reaction these three cycles which is repeated continuously in the uh, reaction and uh, in the denaturation uh, the temperature would be 94 degrees centigrade primary annealing uh, in the next slide we will see how melting temperature would be calculated and it is basically uh, for the uh, primer annealing and dna synthesis processes so extension means dna synthesis which occur at the 72 degree 72 degree centigrade which and the time would be depend upon the length of the uh, dna segment which has to be amplified so for the primer designing we need to know what are the primers primers are synthetic dna strands of about 18 to 25 nucleotides complementary to the 3 prime end of the template dna means this should not be too long and this should not be too less if it will be too less then it will bind anywhere in the template strand it will, if it will be too long then maybe no amplification would take place so it uh, it is very important to know that it the length should be very important for maximal efficiency or as well as for good specificity specificity as well as for the strength most important line is that dna polymerase starts synthesizing dna from 3 prime end of the primer as i mentioned optical primer sequences and appropriate primer concentrations are very crucial for the maximum specificity or for the maximum uh, maximum amplification that too with lesser uh, error so what are the ideal primers first thing the two primers should be made forward and the reverse primer and both are complementary to the three prime end of the antisense as well as sense sense strands respectively secondly thymine and adenine residues should be avoided the fire three prime end of the primer because adenine and thymine binds to hydrogen bond with two hydrogen bonds so this will weaken the can the bonds between them and second thing is that primer should uh, preferably end on c or g sequence because these are bind to three hydrogen bonds so this will have more uh, strongerness than thymine and adenine run of three or more cg uh, at the three prime end of the primer should be avoided because it can lead to mispriming means it will lead to stem and loop structure formation second is that magnesium ions against the concentration of the magnesium ion will ultimately affect the pcr reaction lesser amount of the desired product will be produced if we will add low mg plus 2 ions and higher amount of mg concentration will lead to non specific amplification so again magnesium ion concentration would be very important so how do we calculate the melting temperature of the primer the temperature at which half of the dna duplex dissociate to become single strand and display duplex stability means the both the uh, strands of the dna as we know dna is double stranded so double stranded has to be uh, uh, dissociated into single strand so that synthesis can occur so in that case the dna duplex should dissociate and uh, become single strand for that the reaction would be for that the temperature should be 52 to 58 degree centigrade maybe it can go to 60 degree centigrade also and this is the formula for where we can calculate the melting temperature force g plus c to a plus t so uh, these are the adenine uh, adenine guanine and cytosine thymine these are the purines and the pyrimidines suppose atgc atgc are the primer sequences so number of guanine and number of cytosine would become here and uh, we have to uh, calculate adenine or uh, this thymine also then we will come to know the melting temperature of the primers again this is the general pcr reaction which we will do in the uh, laboratory conditions template dna that is the gene it has to be 500 nanogram dntps which is a substrate tag can uh, pfu polymerases and enzymes buffers forward and reverse primers and molecular water 
again the different companies provide different type of uh, final volume concentrations for the master mix preparation so we will have to use in our uh, uh, times uh, uh, 25 microliter concentration but here suppose in g g9 and high media we will use uh, 20 microliter concentrations so these are the steps i also mentioned in the my uh, previous slides steps involved in the pcr uh, initial step for uh, this will this cycle will uh, be uh, for one time only 94 degree centigrade for 5 minutes second is denaturation would uh, denaturation prim primer annealing and, ext uh, and extension this will go till 32 35 cycle and it goes on repeating this will produce the million and billion copies of dna and the, this is the final extension 72 degree centigrade for 5 minutes if we will go uh, uh, after the pcr somewhere outside then we will have to keep uh, maintain this condition so these three conditions melting annealing and extension again i repeatedly uh, telling number of times these cycles has to be repeated again a gel electrophoresis unit means suppose pcr product has been amplified now it has to be run on the gel so that we can view uh, we can view the our product so this is the gel electrophoresis unit the power uh, supply uh, negative to positive since DNA contain phosphorus so DNA is uh, also negative charge and this is also negative charge so these will repel and the DNA will jump out from the well and it will move in positive direction so as you can see the forward uh, shorter molecules will move more fast and the larger molecules will be behind this is the basic representation of the gel electrophoresis unit these are the sample wells these are the electrodes negative to positive it will run and this is the power supply we will apply this is the gel documentation unit number of companies provides different type of machines exigen j9 high media bio red so this is the exigen machine uv light uh, falls on the, our dna so this is the gel picture suppose these are the dna products which has been amplified and run this is the marker and we know the this is the reference and we know this is our reference that is this means this is our ladder so this suppose this is 500 kb so we will come to know that this will be in between 500 to 600 kb and the shorter fragments will like this may be 100 200 so this uh, this type of uh, thinking this type of manipulations we have to follow and we have to uh, consider it with our reference genomes uh, reference ladders so what are the applications of the PCR? PCR applications are DNA cloning and sequencing. Suppose uh, a gene has to be cloned and it has to be put in the vector. So uh, how do we come to know that the gene has been cloned? Then we, we have to perform the PCR for the site uh, directed mutagenesis, that is gene mutagenesis. Suppose a single nucleotide has been incorporated and the whole mutations has been occur in the gene. So again, gene mutation, in gene mutation PCR uh, will be done. And DNA profiling, that is DNA finger, uh, fingerprinting in parental disputes, we will do DNA profiling. And second is DNA-based phylogenies, phylogenies means DNA-based trees, phylogenetic trees. If we need to construct, we need to do PCR. For the functional analysis of the means, means the, whether the gene is present or the gene is absent. For this, one, uh, we will use PCR. And uh, second last is diagnosis of the hereditary diseases. Like uh, any of the diseases now, lot of, lots of molecular markers are there in the market. So we have to perform the PCR to know the diseases. Nucleic acid test, just like COVID test, uh, we have to perform the nucleic acid. But this test is based on the expression reaction, which I will cover in our next lecture. So the expression analysis, we have to isolate cDNA. We have to perform real-time PCR. And there is a uh, lot of difference between the normal PCR and the qualitative uh, PCR. This is called the whole... Uh, this whole lecture covers the PCR that is normal PCR. In the next lecture, we will cover about qualitative. And the, uh, in both the cases, uh, what are the differences between these two PCRs, we will cover. And thank you for this uh, lecture.